till now we have seen what are static and dynamic systems what are causal and non causal systems and what are time invariant and time variant systems now we will discuss the next type of system property the property of linearity now based on the linearity property we can divide the systems into two types the first one is linear systems and the second one is non linear systems so in this presentation i am going to explain what are linear and non linear systems and once we are done with the definition and the basic understanding of the two systems we will solve one example to understand the topic in much better way so the first thing is to understand the definition of linear systems and once we know the definition of linear systems we can automatically define the non linear systems so let's see how we can define the linear systems the system which follows the principle of superposition is known as linear system so you can write down this definition the system which follows the principle of superposition is known as linear system and the non linear systems are those systems which do not follow the principle of superposition so the important thing is to understand what is the principle of superposition this principle of superposition or the law of superposition is sufficient and necessary condition to prove the linearity of the system so if you can prove the system is following the principle of superposition it is definitely going to be linear system because this particular principle is the necessary and sufficient condition so let's first understand what is this principle of superposition the principle of superposition is combination of two different laws the first law is known as law of additivity law of additivity and the second law is known as law of homogeneity so we will first understand the law of additivity and once we are done with law of additivity we will understand law of homogeneity and the two laws combined will form the law of superposition so let's see what do we mean by the law of additivity in order to understand the law of additivity let's take one system and the input to the system is x1t and the output of the system is y1t so y1t is the output obtained from this particular system when the input is x1t now we will change the input instead of having x1t we will have a different input applied to the same system let's say the input is x2t and for this input the same system is generating the output y2t so this is what we have and now we will add the two outputs y1t and y2t we will add after adding y1t and y2t we have y1t plus y2t so this is what we will do in first step in second step instead of adding the outputs y1t and y2t we will add the two inputs x1t and x2t and the result of addition x1t plus x2t will act as the input to the same system and the output generated we will compare with this result so let's perform the addition of the two inputs first after adding the two inputs we will have x1t plus x2t and x1t plus x2t is now acting as the input to the same system and let's say the output generated is y dash t now there are two possibilities the first possibility is that the output y dash t is same as y1t plus y2t and the second possibility is that the output y dash t is not same as y1t plus y2t so i will write down the two possibilities y dash t is same as y1t plus y2t this is the first possibility and the second possibility is that it is not same as y1t plus y2t now in the first possibility when the two results are same when the two results are same we say the system is following the law of additivity it is following the law of additivity and in the second case when the two results are not same it is not following the law of additivity 
so i think you now understand what do we mean by law of additivity you have to give two different inputs to the system and you have to record the two outputs then you need to add the two outputs and you need to record the final result after this instead of adding the two outputs we will add the two inputs directly as you can see here we have added x1t and x2t and then we will feed x1t plus x2t to the same system the system is not changing throughout these operations we have the same system and in the second case let's say the output is y dash t now compare the two results if they are same then the system is following the law of additivity and we can move on to check the law of homogeneity because the principle of superposition is composed of law of additivity and the law of homogeneity and if any one of these two laws are violated then the principle of superposition is violated and the system is nonlinear so when you check the law of additivity and you find the two results are not same then stop right over there and you can write down the system is nonlinear there is no need to check for the law of homogeneity because the law of additivity is violated and thus the principle of superposition is also violated and the system is nonlinear now we will discuss what do we mean by law of homogeneity the law of homogeneity is a very simple law to understand it is very much similar to the law of additivity and as we are checking the linearity property of the given system we cannot change the system while checking if the system follows the law of homogeneity or not the system will remain same as it was in case of law of additivity so we are having the same system and let's say the input this time is xt and the output generated is yt now this time we will not perform any addition but we will perform the multiplication we will multiply a constant k to the obtained output yt after multiplying k to the output yt we will have k times yt so this is all we need to do in step number one in step number two we will multiply the same constant the same constant k to the input xt and the obtained result will act as the input to this system and then the generated output we will compare with kyt that's why i was telling you law of homogeneity is very much similar to the law of additivity so let's complete our step number two after multiplying k to xt we will have k xt and this k xt is the input to the system and the output generated is let's say y dash t now again there are two possibilities y dash t may be equal to k y t or it may not be equal to k y t so in first possibility y dash t is equal to k y t and in second possibility it is not equal to k y t now when y dash t is equal to k y t the first possibility we say the system is following the law of homogeneity the system is following the law of homogeneity and in case number two or the possibility number two when y dash t is not same as k y t we say the system is not following the law of homogeneity so this is all you should know about the law of homogeneity and there is no compulsion on checking the law of additivity first you can check the law of homogeneity first and when you check the law of homogeneity first and you find the system is not following the law of homogeneity there is no need to check the law of additivity because the system is going to be nonlinear as it has already violated the law of superposition so i hope you now understand what do we mean by law of superposition it is combination of two different laws the first law is law of additivity and the second law is the law of homogeneity now we will solve one example very quickly to understand what we have discussed till now in this example output yt is equal to x sin t we need to find out if this system is linear or it is nonlinear for this we will first check the law of additivity and in order to check the law of additivity what we do we add two different outputs generated by the system when we feed two different inputs let's say the first output is y 1t and from this relationship we can say y 1t is equal to x 1 sin t 
In the same way, we will have y two t, and it is equal to x two sine t. Now we will add the two outputs y one t and y two t, y one t plus y two t, and it is equal to x one sine t, x one sine t plus x two sine t. So this is what we have in step number one. In order to check the law of additivity, now in step number two, instead of adding the two outputs y one t and y two t, we will add the two inputs x one t and x two t, x one t plus x two t, and then we will feed it to our system. And if you see the property or the functionality of the system, you will find the t in the input is replaced by sine t, x t. is the input of the system and the output yt is equal to x sin t if you compare xt and x sin t you will find in place of t we have sin t so this is the functionality of the system so in step number 2 we have x1t plus x2t so in place of t we will have sin t so let's quickly write down the output of the system it will be x1 sin t plus x2 sin t and if you compare the two results if you compare this result here and this result here you will find they are same they are same so we can say that the system follows the law of additivity now we will check the law of homogeneity in order to check the law of homogeneity we will multiply a constant k to the output of the system law of homogeneity yt is the output and it is equal to x sin t we will multiply k one constant to the output so this side we will have k x sin t now in step number 2 instead of multiplying this k to the output yt we will multiply it to the input xt and then we will feed it to the system and we already know the functionality of the system it replaces t by sin t so we will have k x in place of t we will have sin t now compare the two results you will find they are same so we can say that the system follows the law of homogeneity and as the system is following both law of additivity and law of homogeneity it follows the law of superposition and as it follows the law of superposition the system is linear so this is all for this lecture in the coming presentations we will solve different types of questions based on linear and non linear systems